Hey guys, welcome to Alpha Efficiency Screencast. And today I will be talking about my Mac setup in OS X Lion. Basically, I want to talk about how I'm going to set up the workflow and how you need to set up your launch bar. Launch bar is equivalent to iPad's Springboard. So the way you set up your applications, basically I treat it as I used to treat the desktop. Uh, first thing I did, as you may notice, is that I have made these icons huge so I can access them anytime I want and I can have a clear choice of what I want to go to. After that, I cleaned up the desktop. So as you can see, it's completely empty. I don't have anything on it. I want it to be as zen-like as possible because when I sit in front of a computer, I don't want anything to have... It's gonna possibly distract me and once you have this clean setup it's a good way to go now regarding launch bar I have five wind five uh, five launch launch bar desks number one is productivity desk and here I feature OmniFocus Evernote Google Chrome toggle desktop reader address book and iCal uh, I want to keep choices down to the bare min minimum, so once I'm in productivity mode where I want to see what I want to do next, I want to have everything at the display and I'll limit my choices, so I want to check out what's happening in OmniFocus, I'm there, and I can see what are the things that I need to do for my blog, for my upcoming ebook, or what are admin tasks, since they are completed for the time being. Then when I come back, I want to see what's happening in Evernote. I see how full my inbox is, and then from there I choose what to do with that. Uh, oh, this is garbage, apparently. <laughs> uh, but you get a point. I am clearing my inbox, and then I go to Chrome, and there, since I was YouTubing, then I come back. If I want to do something else, that's basically it. So as, le as less choice as possible, the mo more down to the task you are. So if I want to now turn to the writing, I, I have really limited choices for writing. I am usually writing in Ohm Writer, which is awesome. I'll show you that guys later. Pages, when I want to switch the mood, and my node for mind mapping. I'm try. I'm just trying out Omni OmniGraph Professional. Uh, it's an app for from Om Omni Group, and it's basically just graphs. And it's not a mind mapping tool, so I'm not using it for that purpose. Um, okay, now before I move from my writing creating table of Launchpad. I want to show you the Ohm Writer. I'm really excited about this app. So, basically, what it does, it works in a desktop mode only. It doesn't have a full screen notification. Now, I'm not sure do you hear, but I'm quite. I'm, I'm sure that you don't hear. But there is. I'm using headphones, so I'm isolating myself from the environment, and it plays some nice ambient sounds. And when you are typing. You are actually hearing the typing sounds. There are quite a couple of typing sounds to choose, and there are multiple options regarding the background. You can change the background. This is the, f the default one. You can change the music. This is a free version. In a pro version, you have way more choices. And that's basically it regarding the Ohm Writer. Uh, it's great in order to boost productivity. Other way that I'm using the uh, <coughs> my other setup for for writing is actually Pages, and the only thing that I am uh, doing differently uh, than Ohm Writer is that I actually pick up. I go full screen, so I take the distractions off. I play some music in iTunes and 
then I get back and I'm completely isolated from the outside environment and I'm able to write without any distractions whatsoever. Now the third window is uh, focused on creating but since uh, any other type of content beside uh, writing is not my main focus I am I'm just displaying like the tools that I will use in the future or I am currently using like ScreenFlow. iTunes is in this category because there's a lot of audio video and I, I kind of grouped it that way and yeah there's my iTunes library and Final Cut Pro I will be using for video editing for videos such as this one Adobe Photoshop well no-brainer every blogger needs to have one uh, <coughs> GarageBand I will I am and I will be using it more often for editing my podcasts uh, iMovie as a more simple version of Final Cut Pro iPhoto uh, for all my photo photographies that I've and that I've collected during the time. Like I have like ten years of photos in in that app. Uh, Excel and numbers are pretty 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 close by. I need them for some spreadsheets. Uh, Keynote is absolutely gorgeous application that is a replacement Apple's replacement for PowerPoint. And Market Samurai for keyword research and Tweet Adder for some Twitter optimization. Automation, pardon me. Now that concludes the 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 third third window in launch bar, and the fourth one is social media. I keep I keep all my distractions over here. So I have my instant messengers, Skype, and Trillion. Here's Twitter and Safari is my uh, default social media browser and uh, mail. The last window is actually the window where I keep the stuff that I'm not frequently using and they aren't in any of the categories mentioned, so I don't mind having too much clutter here. Uh, I'm using, I'm, this is also a window for system apps and they are in the top top shelf, so to say, top row. Uh, system preferences, Pathfinder that I still need to figure out how it works and stuff. So... <clears throat> It might replace my Finder, but for the time being, it's completely unnecessary. Uh, Dupe Guru is an application that helps you find uh, uh, duplicate items on your computer, and so you can delete them more efficiently. Uh, mini usage is uh, showing how much of processor you are using, and on what tasks. So, <clears throat> pretty neat. Uh, Smart Converter is helping me convert. AVI files into uh, iPhone and iP uh, iPad friendly formats. App Cleaner is basically helping you clean the apps that you uh, uh, that you don't want to use anymore. So if you are trying out some apps and you want to get rid of them, as opposed to just uh, going to applications and finding an app that you want to delete, uh, you don't do that. You find them in the App Cleaner because once you find an app, uh, he searches for all the leftovers that usually you don't get, and here they are. For example, sorry Google. Uh, uh, beside that, um, uh, I use BitTorrent as my default torrent client. FileZilla for managing my my websites. App Store, of course, I'm, I'm not using it frequently because my setup is pretty good as it is. Uh, Automator that I wish I'd try someday, but can't seem to find the time because I'm focused on work, actually, as opposed to playing around with all the nifty gadgets. And these are the stuff bulked up in folders that I really rarely use, like games and graphic designs that came with Adobe Photoshop or... Here's the folder stuff stuff that I don't use. Uh, for example, I noticed that I have a calculator here, and you might wonder why I'm not using a calculator. Well, I am, as a matter of fact, but only in a dashboard, which is the final piece of of my my productivity ecosystem on, on my Mac. So I have I have these sticky notes as they are eco friendly and they remind you of paper, so you are not hurting the trees when when you use these. Uh, 
here's the more a little bit more advanced calculator and I love it this globe is for uh, aesthetic purposes only uh, here you can follow the weather in Belgrade it's pretty freezy this is not zero degree Fahrenheit this is Celsius just for those from America and these are notes uh, I want to thank you for watching uh, my video on uh, six productivity uh, and uh, here below I have uh, iStat Pro uh, it displays some basic uh, basic parameters of, of your computer saying like how much your CPU is warm like 56 degrees of Celsius how much uh, your ventilation is working at what at what speed and stuff like that that can help you out in case uh, something goes wrong with your computer you can instantly see it right here so you can maybe restart right away and things like that uh, the thing I love most about my setup is actually this part where I have huge icons and they actually get bigger as I mouse over them and it's pretty simple so the less stuff you have uh, just goes like that uh, the less the less options you give yourself, the more productive you are. So as opposed to having a, like a huge row here with a lot of tiny icons, I choose to have seven to ten icons at, at most, uh, along with these folders here. Uh, so this concludes this video. I want to thank you again for watching. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, I encourage you to subscribe to. Alpha Efficiency Newsletter, you can locate it, locate it at alphaefficiency.com, uh, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and shoot me an email if you have any questions, and I'll hit you right back, talk to you soon.